Woo. Oh, praise God. Oh, Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 through 31. I'm going to read out of the NLT. Each year, I try my best to make sure that I do a series on righteousness because it is the foundation, I believe, to living this grace life and to living by grace, understanding righteousness. And so, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to, to stay in this series. And uh, then after this series, hopefully we'll be talking about, you know, I believe you have to have a relationship in order to live this life. And we'll be talking about practically how do you develop it, you know? So we're going to talk today, talk, we're going to look at understanding the foundation of righteousness. Understanding the foundation of righteousness. Because even when I said that, some of you may have, you know, been thinking, well, you know, what, what's the big deal about righteousness? I, you know, it, it's the foundation to, to this grace life. And, and, and how, how does that work? What does that look like? Well, let's check this out. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30 and 31 in NLT. He says, God has united, God has united you with Christ Jesus. Now, now, no, God united us with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him, Jesus, to be wisdom itself. So Jesus is wisdom, all right? He didn't have it, he is. For God has made Jesus to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. Christ made us right with God. You didn't become right with God through your own performance. You are right with God. Your stance right now before God is his responsibility. He made you right with God. He made us pure. And watch this, holy. He, it, you, you ask, well, am I holy? He made you holy. You, your stance with God, you are righteous, you are holy, and you have access to wisdom itself through Jesus Christ. Now, that's something that's just got to be received. That's something that you've got to say, you know what? Since he made me righteous, then I receive that by declaring and believing I am the righteousness of God, not because of what I've done. I've been made righteous, therefore I am righteous, even though somebody doesn't see me righteous. He sees me righteous, and I am righteous, and I am evolving in my state in righteousness. My stance is already settled. I'm already righteous. My state is now transforming into what he made me. See, he makes you first, and then you become what he makes you. Ah, ah, don't y'all start nothing here this morning. Ah, and so he made us righteous. You know, it, I, know it, I know it blows the mind of some believers when I say to you, you are holy. But I'm not saying that based on your behaving and what you're doing. Uh, I'm saying that you are holy because he made you that way. You can't become something unless he already made you that which you are to be transformed into. You're on the journey towards what he made you. That's your journey. And you've been made righteous, you've been made holy. He has made us pure and holy, and he freed us. He freed us from sin. So you know what I say as a believer? I'm free from sin. I'm, I'm free from sin. 
I've been freed from sin. Jesus has freed me from sin. Jesus has made me righteous, and Jesus has freed me from sin. So part of this Christian life, and, and really a big part of your faith, a big part of your faith is maintaining the victory that Jesus has obtained. If he made you that way, you maintain it. Maintaining and becoming what you've been made. So if somebody looks at you and got a problem which you're saying, I am the righteousness of God, and they say, well, I don't think you're righteous because of how you spoke to me last night. So, oh, forgive me, I am already righteous. I'm just becoming that. You caught me in the middle of the journey. <laughs> but just because you caught me in the middle of the journey doesn't dismiss what he made. Somebody need to say, I am the righteousness of God. Now notice, it's, it's you are the righteousness of God not because of what you do. You are the righteousness of God because of what he has already done. And the, and the benefit of getting born again is that now you now receive the stance that's finished while your state is becoming what he made you. See, you already know where you're going. My destination is destination righteousness, destination wisdom, destination pure and holy, destination uh, of, of, of complete, total freedom. I, I already know where I am. And so what happens is your life starts, your life starts demonstrating and shedding the, 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 the old soulish behavior as you take on what you've been made. But I am the righteousness of God. Nothing starts until you agree, I am the righteousness of God. I need you to say that one more time. I am. <laughs> but the time that really matters is when you do something that's not righteous and you have the mitigated gall to open your mouth and say, in the middle of that, I'm still the righteousness of God. That's when we know you believe it. I'm still the righteousness of God. Yeah, I fell, but while I'm getting up, I, was, I, I fell righteous. I'm getting up righteous. I'm standing up righteous because I was made righteous. Hallelujah. So when I got knocked down, a righteous man got knocked down and a righteous man got back up, but that's got to be your foundation. I am the righteousness of God. Now, look at uh, Romans 3. 21 through 22 in the NLT, Romans 3, 21 through 22. Now, watch this. But now, God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets. And he did that a long time ago. Verse 22, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. My faith is in Jesus Christ. My faith is not in my performance. My faith is not in my behavior. Now, now and, and, and I, I apologize for having to pause to say this, but you have to do this. You have to explain to people so, you know, they won't presume that, you know, that means something totally different, you know. Nobody's giving you the license to sin, okay? All right, now, even if you do sin, he says, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna charge that to your account. I'm not gonna charge that against you. But now what you still understand that there are consequences in this, there are consequences in this natural world that exist. Here's the benefit, it's like if, you're, if you take an exam and I'm your, I'm your classroom teacher and, 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 and you, were, you were getting ready to graduate and, and, and you took the final exam and there's information in there that you need to know in order to be successful in what you're gonna do. All right, you flunk the exam except I'm just not going, I'm not going to hold it against you. I'm not going to count it against you. That's a blessing of the Lord. It's not being counted against us. But, but, but please, don't get so deep and dumb that you don't recognize there's still stuff in that test that you failed that you probably need to learn. You know, sometimes the mercy and grace comes and rescue you, and you think, well, you know, he rescued me, but I, I still don't need to deal with the consequences of, of how I behave. Your bad behavior can kill you. You'll go to heaven, but you're going to be dead. 
So this stuff about I'm under the grace of the God and I can go and commit adultery and I, I, that's some people who thought that. I can just go and sleep around and I can do that. Uh, you know, he won't hold it against you, but the, the, the natural consequences of your actions might. And your wife come in and catch you and, 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 and Miss Kitty in the bed and she, she pulled a gun out and said, oops. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? You're the right, but we want to dismiss consequences in the natural, and you keep going with that thing, and, 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 and you holler out, I'm the righteousness of God. I'm glad you're doing that, because I hope you believe that before the bullet reach you. I think y'all understand what I'm saying, right? <laughs> and why you dying? I, I, I'm the righteousness of God. <laughs> so this is not a heaven to hell issue. Heaven was already settled the day you got born again. But don't be enslaved. Don't be a slave to anything. It's not even right. Please understand what I'm saying. And it's not a. It's not a matter if this is right or wrong. It's a matter of, are you turning yourself over to enslavement? Well, hey, God, mind you. I had Pastor Dick, I said this past week, he said, he said, wine is something, but liquor is quicker. <laughs> yeah, he said, wine is fine, but liquor is quicker. And my thing is, are you going to be a slave to liquor quicker? <laughs> don't be, don't, 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 don't. Don't desire to, to be enslaved to anything. That's the issue. I, I, I want to give my whole life to God. I don't want to allow pieces of my life to be in bondage and in slavery to something else. Amen? Amen. Well, I ain't know all that. I don't know about, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grace ain't what I thought it was. Yeah, it is awesome, and it gives you freedom. But do you understand that freedom has boundaries? <laughs> so it says, we're made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. My faith is in Jesus, the person. Grace is a person. My faith is in Jesus. And this is true for everyone, watch this, who believes Jesus, no matter who we are. No matter who we are, I have faith in Jesus. I'm not talking about whether you agree or disagree with a doctrine or, 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 or with a, 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 a teaching or, or, or with, I'm talking about Jesus. Do you believe Jesus? Yes, I'm the righteousness of God. Because I'm not righteous by my own. That's, it's, it's the difference between self-righteousness and the righteousness we have by faith in Jesus Christ. There's righteousness that you get by performing. Well, I'm, I'm righteous because of my performance, okay? And then there's the righteousness you get without your performance, but your simple belief and faith in Jesus Christ. We are righteous with his righteousness. Amen. So self-righteous or God-righteous? It's a choice. All right, all right, and most of, the, most of the church over the years, I don't know if, I'm sure they knew it, but maybe they didn't, have been really working for self-righteousness. Do good, get good. Self-righteousness. I'm good because I did good, okay? Self-righteousness. We're not talking about self-righteousness. We're talking about righteous, righteousness through our belief and faith in Jesus Christ, the righteous, who made us righteous with his righteousness. I have been declared righteous, amen? Now, God's righteousness is given to us as a gift. And like any gift, you have to decide to receive it. Like any gift, you have to decide this is, this is not something earned. This is not something deserved. This is something received, okay? And so that's what this, this is. Righteousness is a gift received, not earned. 
It's, it's amazing to me. We, we can hear this, and then as soon as something comes up in our life, we're trying to earn it. We're trying to do something to feel more righteous or to be more righteous instead of just being righteous because it's a gift and I received that gift. I am the righteousness of God. I, 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 since I've understood the grace of God, I understood how important it is to bring a series to you at least once a year on the righteousness of God because, man, I tell you what, the, the enemy is after your foundation. Are, are you listening to me? He's after your foundation. Look at Psalms 11 and 3 in the King James. He's after your foundation. The foundation of the house is the most important part of the house. If there is a crack in your foundation, and if you allow your foundation to be toyed with, with religion and stuff like that, if, if we can, if, if the enemy can get your foundation, and one day you stay up and you say, I don't believe I'm righteous, I'm telling you, the house falls. Psalms 11 and 3 gives us a reminder. He says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And so I give you an illustration of two houses. Two houses can look the same. The same kind of windows, the same kind of doors, the same kind of roof, but one was built on sand and the other one was built on the rock. Follow me carefully. When challenges come, only the house built on the rock will stand, and challenges are going to come. It shouldn't be whether or not challenges are going to come. Challenges are going to come. If those of you who live godly shall suffer persecution. In this world, you will have tribulation. Challenges are going to come. You need to prepare for challenges. Like in the natural, some people prepare for a hurricane that's on its way. Challenges are going to come. But when challenges come, only the house built on the rock will stand. And I, let me say this, Jesus is the rock. Okay? All other foundations are sinking or shifting or sinking or shifting sand. Jesus is the rock. All, our whole life and our grace life has to be built and sustained and settled on Jesus, who is the rock, Jesus. You know, you can go in some churches and never hear the name of Jesus mentioned. All kinds of wonderful principles, but never hear the name of Jesus mentioned, as if those principles you came up with are better without Jesus. That house is going to fall. I don't care how, how, how awesome the principles you heard, but if it's not on Jesus. Let, let me show you something. Go to Matthew chapter 16. And uh, let's start at verse 13. I'm, I'm going to try to go through this. We, we, we may get stuck here. I don't know, but dude, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> All right, now, I, 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 want you to, I want you to just follow me as I take you through these, these few verses here. Jesus is the rock. Say that out loud with me. Jesus is the rock. So my righteousness is on that foundation. My righteousness is that foundation of Jesus, Jesus the righteous, who made me righteous. That's my foundation, all right? So you know the enemy is going to always be trying to attack that foundation of your righteousness. All right, now watch this. This is, this is just so cool. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? <laughs> This is interesting. Jesus said, who, Jesus said, who do they say I am? Not because he was, uh, needed, needed their validation. He said, who, 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 who do they think I am? And uh, he goes, verse 14, he says, he says uh, they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias. Some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? You, you've been with me. Who do you think I am? All right, now watch this very carefully. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm. Now, now, you say, what are you doing that for? You think he just said that. It came out of his mouth 
before his brain could gain concept of what came out of his mouth. What he said came out of his mouth came straight from God out of his mouth. Yes, How do you know that? Well, look at this next verse. And Jesus answered and said, now, wait a minute. Uh, go back to verse, 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 verse 16. Simon Peter answered, and we know the question, who do you think I am? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And watch this, next verse. And Jesus answered. All right, what did he answer? What, what was it? He, <laughs> what was he answering? We know the question, first of all, but then it comes in verse 17, and Jesus answered. What was he answering? He was answering Simon's surprise. Thou art the Christ, the son of the, 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 son of the living God. What's that? And Jesus answered. What did I just say? And Jesus answered. Somebody said, how can you say that? I'm going to show you. He, we know Jesus answered. He answered something. I mean, he just didn't go get an answer. It's just like me coming up to you and say, yeah, tomorrow at 5 o'clock. <laughs> like, I can't say nothing to you. What you talking about? Yeah, next week. <laughs> he looking like something going on with him. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Now, he, he's talking to Simon, he's talking to, to, to Peter, but he wasn't known as Peter then. He was known as Simon Barjona or the son of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. So I'm going to tell you what just happened when out of your mouth flowed Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That didn't come from you. That didn't come from your, the acrobats of your mind. That didn't come from Sunday school quarterlies. What just came out of your mouth wasn't revealed by flesh and blood or your intellectual part. It didn't come out of that. It came from the Father who revealed it unto you. He said, this was by my Father which is in heaven. You got, rev you got revelation of who he was from heaven. Heaven said, you think he's just a prophet. You think he's Jeremiah. You think he's all these folks, but I'm telling you who he is. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter said, ooh, where'd that come from? Now, how many of you know Christ is not Jesus' last? <laughs> Christ is not Jesus' last name. Somebody said, what's Jesus' last name? Christ, I believe. <laughs> no, Christ is the anointed one. He said, thou art the anointed one, the son of the living God. Ooh. All right, now watch this. But my Father, which is in heaven, he revealed it to you. Now, let me, let me let you in on something. The Father, which is in heaven, sent the Holy Ghost, which is in you, so that heaven can still be revealing some stuff to you. So you need to trust the heaven you got in you. Now, how are you questioning whether or not you're going to go to heaven when you already got a little heaven on the inside of you? Don't let the devil play that trick with you. You sure you're going to get in? Bro, I'm already in. He, he in me. He in me. He's, my, he's the host. I'm hosting him because one day he's going to host me. Ooh, Jesus, I feel like taking off right now, boy. With it by <laughs> Glory to God, excuse me. Enjoy myself a quarter bo shot about. Now watch this next verse. Verse 8. And I say unto you, I say unto thee. Now listen to this. He he just a couple of times said, I'm, I'm talking to Simon, the son of Jonah. And he said unto thee, that thou art. He wasn't talking about what your name is. He says, you are a Peter. What do you mean, a Peter? Well, I think in the Greek, it's a, it's a piece of rock. Fragment of it. 
He ain't rock, but something happens when you get a revelation of the rock. A little, a, a little, here the boy. <laughs> a little of the rock, gonna, it's going to make you more sound. The, the, the more you understand who Jesus is, the more solid you become. Yes, sir. Come on. You become solid. Come on. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Thou art. I think it would be even closer to the truth if I said, Thou art rocky. Not Balboa. <laughs> but thou art rock. Thou art Peter. And upon this rock. Hmm. What rock? Now we got to answer that. Upon, upon this rock. You're going to understand a lot about Satan's attack after this. Upon this rock. All right, who's the rock? Okay. He is Jesus. But in context of what I'm reading here, he is saying, upon this revelation of Jesus, upon this revelation of Jesus, I'm going to build my church. Upon this revelation that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the one that removes burdens and destroys yoke. Jesus is the anointed one. The anointing is not just a shake, rattle, and roll. The anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. Hallelujah. If you are a singer and when you sing, everybody in church get a headache, you are not anointed. <laughs> The anointing doesn't bring burdens, it removes burdens, praise God. And just because you fall out on the floor doesn't mean you're anointed. I'm, I'm so fed up with people just falling out. Just, and you can't hardly help it because the guy praying for you, you know, if you control the head, the body got to follow. And he gets you in and put your head all the way back there. You ain't got to do that. If, 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 if the anointing's there, you ain't got to do that. Because I am not as concerned about you falling out as much as I am how you get up because if you fell out sick and get up the same way then you didn't encounter nothing but if you fell out sick and got up and the sickness has been removed then I look at the anointing based on how you get up rather than you fell out <laughs> somebody shout glory. glory say it again glory, glory. Why you got to say that? Because that's what you're about to encounter. Okay. Uh, no, 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 not, maybe here, but in, in your living. Okay. Yeah. Taffy and I are convinced it's in your living. Yeah. It's, not, it's not come to church and, and like, a, like a circus. Let's see what the circus act. No, no, no. Uh, in your living, in your living, in your living, it, 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 you got to live this. It's, it's, it's Jesus in your, in your getting up and Jesus in your getting dressed and your Jesus going to work and your Jesus being around hellish people and your Jesus, you know, driving in the car and your Jesus walking to lunch. It, it's your Jesus encountering all, being slandered. It's your Jesus when they messing with you. It's your Jesus. It's living your Jesus when the money ain't right, when, when you got to figure out how to pay the bill. It, it, it's, it's living with him in all of those situations. It's a daily fellowship with Jesus and you believing what you believe who Jesus is that causes maturity and growth in your life. It's not coming to church to see, oh, let's see if we're going to see some, 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 what show? What show we got today? Man, I, ain't, I don't do shows. <laughs> you don't really, this is, this is, I don't think it's hard, but, uh, you, it's, Somebody say, well, we come to church to worship the Lord. I see what you're saying, you know, as long. But real worship takes place when, when outside the church. It's like, it's like when, you, when you leave here and you got to go home to a husband or a wife or, and some children and, and you got a job to do and you got, you know, uh, wife duties to carry out and, and you got all that stuff going on. I, I, you come here to get built up. So when you go out there, you can worship God, and that means, Lord, do through me and with me what you want to do. 
And worship takes place where you're like, okay, God, I'm your instrument. What do you want me to do? Oh, Lord, that, they just said that to me. Let me, how do you want to use me? How do you want to use me, Lord? How do you want to use it? That's where the worship takes place. It's like when I went uh, yesterday to get me a, a, a veggie bowl. I, I really wanted some, to go to Sprout to get cookies, but the, the Lord helped me. <laughs> and, and the service was just, just so excruciating, hard. And I, I stood there fighting me. Because I knew if I could control my mouth, I, I could control everything else. And I, I just wanted to say something. I, I'm just standing here. Everything ain't ready. I'm standing here. All I got to do is tap my car and we can go. Why won't you And I thought, no matter what, you control this tongue because this is worship. This is worship. And the reason why I, I mix it with songs because sometimes you got to sing a song to help you through what God's trying to get you to do in a, in a, in a pressure situation. And when she finally got it, I made sure to say it very clearly and with kindness. Thank you so much for your service. Now my head was like as crappy as it was. Thank you so much for your service. Now, some of you would think, well, well I'm not gonna give a tip. I'm gonna... No, that ain't right. Cause worship is looking, looking beyond what you feel like and asking God for some empathy for maybe something happened that's kind of, you know, messing with her day and I still need to be a blessing to her. That's worship, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. The circus should no longer be in church. I have put out all the clowns and got rid of all of the circus acts so you can come here and get built up and have some for real church so when you go out there where it matters, your light will shine to such a point. Now, you are not the light. Jesus is the light, but we want to see that light in you. Yes. Yes. Well. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, mm -hmm. I try. I try. It was an honest lie. You come to church this morning? I try. You know you ain't coming. It was an honest lie. He said, I say unto thee that thou art a Peter, and upon this revelation of Jesus being the Christ, I'm going to build my church on the revelation of Jesus being the Christ, the revelation of Jesus being righteous, the revelation of Jesus being holy and pure. I'm going to build my church on, on Jesus. And notice what he says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against, all right, against it. It what? The church or the revelation of Christ? The devil's not going to prevail against the revelation you get of Christ, which is why Taffy and I are trying to preach it with our hair on fire. Jesus. It's Jesus. Don't waste your time with these silly little revelations about nothing. Get your focus on the revelation of Jesus. When, when baby need a pair of shoes, it's Jesus that I'm going to stand on. Look, you got a light bill, dude, Jesus. You ain't got a gas bill, too, Jesus. Doctor said I'm sick, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is my way in. Jesus is my way out. Jesus is my healing. He's my deliverance. He's my financier. The gates of hell won't prevail against that. But some crackerjack principle from some life coach, I tell you, the gates of hell might knock that down. Might not be the gates of hell. Might be Jesus will knock that down. Technology is interesting, but don't let technology come between you and Jesus. And don't allow technology to think it can take Jesus' place. 
We're about to enter into the next two or three years of some of the most technological advances that this country has ever seen before, but you got to make sure you know how to use it so it don't use you. I, look, I got, just got to mention verse 19, just so you'll know. And with this revelation of Jesus, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you forbid on earth, bind, shall be forbidden in heaven. And whatsoever you shall permit on the earth, <laughs> or loose on the earth, shall be permitted in heaven. He now says, I give you the right to exercise the authority of Jesus while you're living this grace life. Every now and then, you need to let the devil know who he's dealing with. Like, bro, I'm just not some little scrub Christian living down here. You know who I am? <laughs> I am a son of the Most High God. And by the blood of Jesus, he's accepted me into this sonship, which means I have access to the anointing of the anointed one. And in fact, if you really want to know the truth, the anointed one allowed me to be part of the anointed ones and I can execute authority on this planet. And I don't have to do it a hundred times. I already know who I am. I trust Jesus. So he's given you a name above every name. Jesus. But some people don't, you don't have enough to, for, for, for the name to work. You just articulate it because you, you read about, well, in the name of Jesus this and in the name of Jesus that, but you really don't believe it because your foundation has been destroyed and you don't know that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. Say it three times. I'm the righteousness of God. <laughs> you believe it? Yes. Well, praise God for that. I believe I'm the righteousness of God. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In verse 10 and 11 in the NLT. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 10 and 11 in the NLT. Verse 10 says, because of God's grace to me. Wow. Because of God's grace to me. This grace, this unmerited, abounding provision and the operation of his unrestrained, infinite love that functions through Jesus Christ for mankind especially for those who depend on him. This operation of his love, because of this operation, he said to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. Verse 11, for no one can lay any foundation other than than the one we already have laid. Jesus Christ. And many will come, many have already come, to try to love, to try, try, try to lay other foundations. The foundation is Jesus. I said the foundation is Jesus. I said the foundation is Jesus. In him we move, in him we breathe, in him we have our very, our very being. Our foundation will only shake if it has been built on something other than Christ himself. And that's what it's got to be about, folks. That's, got, that's what it's got to be about in our lives and in everything that we cover. Now, the old covenant, let's go there just for a moment. Let's look at this other foundation, this foundation that uh, is probably or would probably be declared self-righteousness, a foundation that's based on performance. In other words, you, uh, for, for many years, a lot of us thought the foundation was what we do. Uh, and, and obedience was the, the foundation. Uh, yeah, I'll do that, Lord. Uh, you know, uh, obedience is the foundation. 
And I got to obey, I got to obey, I got to obey, I got to obey. And I know this is freaking you out because all your life we've all heard that. I got to obey, I got to obey because we felt like obedience, my, my more obedience to the law, my performance where the law is concerned, my obedience to the law, my performance to where the law is concerned, it now becomes your, your foundation. And that foundation is based in self-righteousness and based in performance. But very few people recognize that that was adjusted even in, oh, look, go to Romans chapter 1 and 5. In the, in the New Covenant, there is something, a phrase that is mentioned at least twice in the New Covenant that is the phrase obedience to the faith. There's obedience to the law, the Mosaic law, but in the New Covenant, there is, there is obedience to the faith. He says through Christ, God has given us the privilege and the authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. Go to the uh, uh, King James. I want them to see this phrase. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith. What is that? Obedience to the faith is simply believing what Jesus has finished. When you believe the finished works of Jesus, you are being obedient to the faith. Obedience to the faith is just believing. It's, it's, it, watch this. It's right believing. Obedience to the faith is right believing. And that freaks people out because now you're having to move from obedience to the law where you're performing and doing something, okay, versus obedience to faith where you are believing right according to what Jesus has finished. And that continues to be a struggle amongst Christian people as we, as we, we make the, the, the switch to understanding this new covenant. This is the new covenant. And under the new covenant, we are, it, no, the new covenant does not require obedience to your performance of the law to do good to get good. Under the new covenant, it is obedience to faith or right believing to receive what Jesus has already done. It's already done. Your healing's already done. Your deliverance is already done. It's already done. But if you, under the new covenant, start operating by obedience to the law, what you're going to do is, I'm going to obey by performing, and you will frustrate the grace of God. Obedience to the faith, I believe in Jesus. I believe I'm the righteousness of God. I believe that I'm healed. I believe that I am holy. I believe it's right believing. <laughs> and then what do you do when you got that obedience to the faith right? I am resting in what Jesus has done. I am resting in who Jesus is, and I am resting in what Jesus has done. So, so what is, where's the church right now? The church right now has been saturated in performance-based religion. And the Mosaic law is a performance-based law. Check it out yourself. It's, it's all about, and if you do, and if you do, and if you do, and if you do, and if you do this, then you'll get this. And if you do this, then you'll get this. And then you move on down in verse 28. It says, now, let me show you what if you don't do it. If you don't do it, then this going to happen to you. And if you don't do it, then this will curse to come on to you. And if you don't do it, so, so the, Old Test, the Old Covenant of the law is based on if you do, then you'll get blessed. If you don't do, then you'll get cursed. And Jesus said, uh, this is too flawless for fallen people to keep. Uh, Hebrews 8, he says, I, he found fault. He found fault. Go, go, to, go to Hebrews 8. I, I, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. I mean, if we're there, I got to show it to you. Because I love the way some of you look at me when, when you, you, you're like, <laughs> so now you think the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, and he's like, don't receive that, don't receive that. And you have to understand, what are you going to do with the Scripture? 
And, and I often think about that. What are you going to do with the scripture like in 1 Corinthians 15 where he says that the law is the strength of sin? Do you ignore that? You're trying to keep something that strengthens sin? Now, the law is not sin. The law is perfect. The problem is, is in, 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 in the Garden of Eden, Adam fell into independence from God and started depending on himself more than he depended on God. And that fallen man who was full of self-confidence <laughs> thought he could keep something that was perfect. The law is not bad. The law is good. The law represents God. The law represents his character. The law is eternal. But it's too flawless for a fallen man who thinks that in his self-confidence he can keep something so perfect. And so the law was given to show him who he was, like spiritual dye. Spiritual dye is not medicine for nothing. It ain't going to cure nothing. It's just going to show you the problem. And we got people who still tripping. I don't care what you say, I'm going to live by the law. And you sinning. We ain't got to ask Holy Ghost if you are. You are. Because it strengthens sin. It's designed to kill you. It's designed to destroy you. Look at, you want to go read the Old Testament? Look at how many people died from complaining. Look at the fact that it was a righteous act to stone a man who picked up sticks on the Sabbath. See, you can't keep some of the law the one you like. And then look at what Jesus added to the law. If you do this, uh, then I'm, you need to cut your hand off. Ain't, ain't nobody cutting their hand off. You, you can't cherry pick the law. James chapter 2 said, if you, if, you, if you fail in just one area, then you've offended the whole law. And we still trying to live by what grandmama and them, that, they, that's all they knew at the time. That's all they knew. You have to be delivered from people to preach the gospel of grace. You have to want to be a servant to God. Like Paul said, Paul said, listen, I, <laughs> I am preaching this gospel because I want to serve God. Because there's something. You get just clobbered by, by church folks. I went from 80 invitations a year to 10. It didn't bother. I, got, I was tired. <laughs> but there was just, we don't want to hear that grace stuff. Well, Jesus is grace, so you don't want to hear about Jesus? And we fight for our privilege to stay in bondage to, to the law, which is perfect and designed to show you that you're not perfect. And then he came over to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, and he says, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant or agreement, which was established upon better promises. Verse 7, watch this. Seven, quick. It's just right after six. Seven. You know, you want to get flowing and then it is. <laughs> For if the first covenant, he's referring to the covenant of the law. If the first covenant had been faultless, not, the co the, not that the law had fault, the agreement had some fault. And if the first covenant had been faultless, he said, then should no place have been sought for the second. If the covenant of the law was all right, we wouldn't be talking about sending Jesus, having him go through everything he went through to give us another covenant because the first one, there was fault found with the first one. What was the fault? It was too perfect for imperfect people to keep. Okay. And then if you read, what, chapter 20 and 21, 
he institutes the sacrificial, the sacrificial system of animals. He says, so here's what I'm going to do. This just shows you God's mercy and grace right here. He says, I already know you can't keep this. How many of you know, watch this. No man on the earth ever kept the covenant perfectly. And it wasn't, it wasn't if I kept 99%. It, it's got to be 100%. He says, you got to keep all the law. All of everything. <laughs> uh, in fact, all mean everything, don't it? <laughs> and, and, and Jesus is the only one that could do that. Everybody else failed miserably. He said, you couldn't do it. So we're not going to do this again. You, how did that guy say it on, on, on the Jack Nicholson? Said it you can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> so God and Jesus got together. Mm. Oh, God, I forgot about this. God and Jesus got together because he made a promise with himself and with Jesus. God and Jesus got together and said, all right, we're going to have to do this. They can't do it. They're too high strong. They think they all that. We'd have been all right had Adam just realized that I created him and quit trying to act like I didn't create him and, and depend on me like everything else I created depended on me. No, Adam said, no, I don't need to depend on God based on what the devil said. Ooh. And so God and Jesus got together and they had a cut of the agreement. Jesus said, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to represent man and you be God. And I'm going to become flesh so they can finally get a picture of what you like. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do everything that mankind could not do because of the fall. I ain't asking them to do nothing but believe me. Believe me, I can do the job. Believe me, I can heal the sick. Believe me, I can handle the devil. That's all he asks you to do. He, all he asks you to do is believe. And you're still trying to do something you've already failed at. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant or agreement with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, verse, come on, come on. not, he says, I'm going to make this new agreement, this new covenant, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant, I regarded them not because out of that covenant, if you do good, you get good, you do bad, you get bad, certain things I couldn't do because they didn't do. He said, this covenant, this new covenant not going to be like that. This new covenant not going to be based on what you do. This new covenant going to be based on what Jesus do. I can't depend on y'all to do, but I can depend on my son to do. And if you believe in my son, you'll get in on the action by having faith in Jesus Christ, not having confidence in yourself. And I'm, I'm like... So it's right there in the Bible. Some preachers say, I don't believe that. It's right there in the Bible, dude. Well, theoretically, in our Bible school, we were taught, I don't care what you're taught. He was wrong when you were wrong, all of them. Read it. Just read it. Read it. Open the Bible up. Read it. Read. Read. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, read. We are under a new agreement led by the only one who can carry it out. Now, come on, read, we're going there first. I don't even know where I am in this message today, and we're going to finish this, and, and I start somewhere next week, and we'll kind of finish. Kind of. All I know right now is I'm the righteousness of God. That's what I know right now. I'm the righteousness of God, not based on what I have done, not based on what I do, but based on Jesus. Every 
everything is based on Jesus. Hallelujah, praise God. My righteousness is based on Jesus. My holiness is based on Jesus. My prosperity is based on Jesus. My, my relationships are based on Jesus. Hallelujah. My healing is based on Jesus. Glory to God. Everything I do is based on Jesus. Hallelujah. He is my rock. Hallelujah. He is my rock. Woo. Glory to God. Y'all, excuse me, y'all. I ain't mean to be hollering that like that. Gosh. Oh. Oh, I'm the righteousness of God. Oh, I'm the righteousness of God. Oh, I'm the righteousness of God. I may fall, but I get right back up. Hallelujah. Peter fell when he was walking on the water, and Jesus helped him to get back up. Because he wanted Peter to know the design that I'm getting ready to bring you is not based on you walking by yourself. Now I'm going to let you have your way coming out here because you put me, you put my back against the corner talking about if thou be the son of God. I am the son of God, so I had no choice but to let you come because you're talking about if thou be the son of God. What am I supposed to say? I be not the son of God. I am the son of God, so I, 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 I have no choice but to say, come on, boy. And then you started walking on the water. Hallelujah. See, but you, you couldn't deal with all the circumstances because just because you walk on the water doesn't mean trouble going to disappear. But when you start walking on the water, that's when trouble going to show up to try to get you to stop working, walking on the water. But when he fell, he lifted his hands up and said, help! What was he doing? Now I got to depend on somebody greater than who I am. And Jesus picked him up, and they turned back, and they were walking on the water together. That's a picture of the grace of Jesus Christ walking with you throughout your life. You need a Savior! You need a Savior! Woo! Glory be to God. You need a Savior! You can't do it by yourself! You need Jesus. <laughs> Woo! You need Jesus. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how many degrees you got. I don't care how much money you got in your bank account. I don't care how famous you are. One day in your life, many days in your life, you're going to need a Savior. You'll fall down on your bended knees and you'll cry, Jesus! And he'll pick you up out of your mess and walk you through life. I done preached myself happy. Jesus, my rock in a weary land. <laughs> Jesus, uh, my shelter in a storm. Jesus, my way out of nowhere. Woo! I. Sit down, I got two more minutes. Some of y'all stand up like, yeah, we're getting out early today, two more minutes. <laughs> I want to shout for Jesus, just getting out early. <laughs> hey, hey, glory to God. <laughs> hey, watch this. For this is the covenant. <laughs> oh, read this in, uh, put this in the NLT. Good Lord. This is the covenant. Hebrews 8 and 10. But this is the new covenant I will make with people of Israel on the day, said the Lord. I'm going to put my law in their minds. It ain't going on stone no more. Stone represents dead. And I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God. They will be my people. Come on. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord. 
He's accepting the responsibility saying, uh, no, I don't need y'all. I don't, please, please understand something. He says, you can water. Mm -hmm. You can water. You can plant. But I'm the only one that can get an increase. You think I need you for somebody to get saved? I'm going to teach them. I'm going to save them. They're going to know me. Because of me, they're going to know me. You got relatives that ain't never been to church that's about to be saved. And they're going to testify. I don't know what happened, but I got in my truck on the way home, and there was this presence in the front seat, and something told me that I need to get born again, and I lifted my hands up and started speaking in something I didn't know what it was. And I tell you right now, somebody got to explain to me what Jesus has done to me. Somebody says, you don't do that. He did that. He did that with several guys. The guy at the pool of Bethesda, he didn't even know who Jesus was. He just got up and took up his, his mat, what it was, his mat, and, 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 and went, and he got healed. He didn't know who Jesus was. He went not you got to have faith first. He, he, didn't have, he didn't know who Jesus was to have faith. He just got up and went and got healed. That's what's going to happen to some of your relatives that you have condemned to hell. Verse 11, for everyone, he said, from everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. And I will forgive their wickedness. And I will never again remember their sins. He said, he said, I'm not going to remember your sins. And you remembering them every day. You, you, you're worried about whether God has forgiven you. He says, I've forgiven you, and I don't remember no more. And you are bringing it up every day in prayer. Lord, if you have time, stop by just a little while. <laughs> Forgive me for the sins I hadn't even committed. So sin consciousness. That's what the, YK, that's what they call it, sin consciousness. You have it on your mind all the time. He says, I, 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 I won't remember your sins. And you think that every time God looks at you, he sees your sins. He said, I, I choose not to remember your sins. I, I look at you as, as righteous and pure and holy. I, I remember your sins. You know, all babies learning how to walk got to fall because falling is a part of walking and walking is a part of running. Watch this. When God speaks of a new covenant, there you go, it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. Somebody said, why hadn't that, why hadn't that happened yet? Because church folks. Church, you won't let it disappear. You keep bringing it up. They preach about it. You, you judge people by it. See, God don't like ugly. <laughs> See, that dress just too short. What you looking for? <laughs> you married, what you looking at? What you looking at her dress too short? <laughs> <laughs> Bless her heart, she just got it. <laughs> <laughs> you sitting up there looking at women talking about her cleave is too low. You're just mad because you... Let me stop. <laughs> bro, bro, let me leave that on. Some things a preacher ain't got no business messing with. <laughs> I am the righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God by what Christ Jesus did. Take a deep breath and know that you're going to be all right. 
And when things feel a little rough, a little pressure, just take a deep breath and say, Jesus, help me. I depend on you. You know? You know? You know? Help me. Help me. The whole deal is to stop depending on yourself and come into complete dependence on him. You're going to be all right. Times are going to be interesting. Seasons are changing. Pressure is intensifying. But the Lord said to Taffy and I this morning, but we ready. Everything going to be all right. We ready. You're ready. Everything going to be fine. All is well. All is well. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You're going to be all right. Yeah, but Pastor, you don't understand. If this happened, I'm going to lose my job. Listen, you got Jesus. If, listen, you got Jesus and promotion cometh from the Lord. Don't, don't you, you fight worry in the name of Jesus and say, I am not going to do it. <laughs> worry is just a negative form of meditation on the wrong thing. You say, I ain't got, I ain't got, I ain't got time for that. I got too much going on to be focusing on something that hadn't happened. That's, that's called panic. You, 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 you're fearful about something that hadn't happened. Panic is groundless fear. I ain't doing that. So I want to challenge you. Come out of the church-going religion that declares your Christianity to the life living every day. Walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. that declares it. Well, I don't know if y'all got anything out of this, but I sure did. <laughs> I preached my... <laughs> I sure did, praise God. Now, bow, bow your heads with me, and, and you, you know where we're going. We're, we're getting ready to give. We're getting ready to give. And look, giving ought not be this weird kind of Spirit that comes over you. Give, run out the church. Give, run out the church. Oh, they're trying to come after your money. You ain't got none. Give, run out the church. Stop it. Giving is a love reflex. For God so loved the world that he gave. Give unto the Lord glory. Do unto his name. Bring an offering and worship him. Oh, there's that worship. Lord, do through me and with me what you desire. Worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Bring an offering and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. A generous offering coming out of our lives? You setting yourself up. What you really believe is what you eventually do. You go to the airport and see an airplane leaking black smoke and water. You think I ain't getting on that? <laughs> if there's coming the time, you... You're going to have to prove it to yourself. I believe God. And when I give, I am saying to every devil in hell, you don't think I believe God? Yeah, I do. I believe him in every area. And this one area is not going to put a damper on the fact that I believe Jesus is my source for everything in my life. He said, I will Provide your need according to my riches in glory through and by Christ Jesus. So care has been promised 
by Jesus, I will care for you. And the only people that got a problem with giving are the people who don't believe that God can care for you. Yes, he can. Tell them we take an offering up right now. <laughs> if, you want an, uh, if you want an offering envelope, <clears throat> raise your hands and the ushers will put one in your hands. Now, I am telling you, when Taffy and I got a hold of this, we took a big old bag and stuck all of our bills in the bag and put on top of it debt-free. Now, it wasn't debt-free when we did that, but we believed Jesus. And when Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, started directing our giving, and I mean started, started directing us what to give. I remember when we had an income tax, uh, income tax check came back, about $1,000, and I'm, we, we prayed, like, what do you do? And, and we were sitting in the front row over in the school cafeteria, and we looked at one another and said, the Lord just told, told, told me to give it all. I said, that's what he said to me. And that's when we started learning about generous giving. And then that's over the years. We, we took our giving, not just at church, but in the lives of people. Lord, there's, is there something going on with that, with that lady right there? Yeah? I want you to help me in this area, he says. I'm like, okay, what do you want us to do? I want you to give her a $500 tip. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She's having a bad day. There's a reason why people have bad attitudes. You've got to ask God to give you some empathy. What happened? I put the money tightly in her hand. She grabbed it tightly so she didn't look at it. Then she went back in the kitchen and just hollered out screaming, ah! I went to a store one time to get my baby a birthday cake when they were little babies, and I went up to the counter, and it was, went early, and I asked ma'am, I said, excuse me, she said, don't you see we talking? I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I, I started walking, I just walked, uh, walked around the store, walking up and down. And I wasn't buying none, I was just, the Lord need to come, come right now. Uh, walking up and down, and then the Lord said, uh, he said, I want you to give her $200. I'm like, nah, Jesus. <laughs> now, it wasn't now, 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 Jesus. It was now, Jesus. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of your own. I give the, this is yours anyway. And I went back to her, and I said, I said, excuse me, ma'am. She looked at me with a look. And I, I was about to go back on that $200 just because she looked at me. I said, ma'am, I said, the, the Lord told me to give you this $200. And she said, and I'm like, go, go on, take it. <laughs> take it. She said, I'm sorry. She knew she did. She said, I'm sorry, but... I needed 150 more dollars to keep my light on. And I, I thank you so much. What you wrote on your cake? <laughs> you never know what people are going through. And sometimes when your, your nice act doesn't answer something, money can answer something. So invite the Holy Spirit to guide you in that area like you invite him to invite to, to, to join you in every area. Hold y'all for it. Let's pray over it. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you with how you've blessed us financially and what you've given into our lives. And we sow a generous offering and seed today in thanksgiving of you, your glory, and worship you in the beauty of your holiness and use us in this, that lives will continue to be changed because of our reflex of love towards you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just go ahead and receive the offering. <clears throat> as, you, as you give this morning, I want you to consider your status and your position 
as a Christian. I want you con to consider your born-again status. If you are not born again today, today is a great day for you to make the decision to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. If you used to have some relationship with God and it seemed like it dissolved, you don't even know what happened, and you want to re-engage that relationship with God, I, I, want you to, I want you to think, I want you to make a quality decision today, not, not a religious decision, not an emotional decision, but I really want you to look at your life and I want to look at where you are. I want you to look at the season that you're in right now. I want you to look at the things that's been going on. I want you to look at the things that you've been facing. And I want you to realize today that you need a Savior. His name is Jesus. And he loves you. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to help you. He wants to bring you to a place that you've never known. He wants your dreams to look like realities in your life. So you're the only one that can make this decision. If you're here right now and you are not born again, I want you to start working your way down here. I'm not born again, and Pastor Dollar, I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed. I want to give my life to Jesus. Secondly, I want to re-engage my relationship with the Lord. Thirdly, I, I, I want the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in my life. And last but not least, here's the, here's the thing. If God's calling me to join this church, he said to Elijah, go to a brook, and there will I sustain thee. If God's calling you to join this church, you need to finally get to the brook that God's calling you to get to. Amen? Now, I want you to go ahead and respond to those things right now. Respond to those things right now. You know how the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart? Respond to those things right now. And, you know, whatever. Respond to those things. Mm-hmm, yeah. None but Jesus. There's nobody else for you but Jesus. Come on. Congregation, don't you appreciate those who have come down this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray that your magnificent grace and truth operates in their life. I thank you they will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.
If you'll turn this way and follow this gentleman to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you uh, biblical information to how to obtain and maintain what you can and receive. We thank God that you're never, ever going to be the same again. Amen. Well, stand up for our final blessing. Thank you guys so much for coming to church this week. Thank you for coming to church this morning. Thank you for letting Taffy and I have the freedom to be who God made us, amen, and being patient and loving with us, and we thank you so much. And now may the Spirit of grace move in your lives all of this week. And the angels of God continue to carry out the command that they have from the Father to watch over you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And may you walk in an enormous amount of favor and blessings this week, that doors will open for you and you know it was the God of grace that did it. May your praise be on automatic this week. And may your life be strengthened spiritually, physically, emotionally, in all areas of your life. May the blessings of God be over your children. No hurt, harm, or danger to come to you. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. We love you. God bless you. Have a great day today. What is up, Grace Gang? World Grace Changers. Gang. Check in. Check in. Check in. in. Service was good today. Amazing. Come on. Amazing. Come on. I feel like it was the perfect ending to the conference. For sure. Yeah. What'd you get out of the I, service? I'm gonna piggyback off of what you said. Cause at first, I'm gonna be honest. I was like, dang, the righteousness again? Yeah. But sometimes you got to be reminded of your foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to the root yeah. of what it is that this grace life truly means. The thing that stuck out to me that Pastor Dollar said is we are constantly evolving in the righteousness of God. And Holy Spirit told me to look up evolving. Evolving means to continuously, gradually develop Y'all hear her? From simple, from a simple form to a more complex form. Come on, girl. Come on. Constantly evolving in the righteousness of God. Yeah. I am constantly being changed yeah. in who God called me to be, and he laid that foundation out. That's so good. What did you get out of service? Oh, really quick, I want y'all to share the message. Come we always on. think somebody may have hopped in later yeah. on in the service and may have missed something that you could share that may be a blessing to them, but I kid you not, it's going to be foundation. Yes. For me, it's realizing that Jesus is the foundation to everything yeah and going back to how he shared uh peter being a piece of the rock the moment i get a, a revelation of a piece of who he Come is on. my god and to build off of that foundation there's nothing within me there's nothing within my works there's yeah in anything that i can do on my own that will sustain me it has to be the rock yeah that's what i got out yes of Ooh. Service was good today. <laughs> so make sure you guys share it out. Get it out. Remind yourself. Yes. Remind others you are the righteousness, righteousness. of God. Yep. Okay? So we're going to move next into our favorite part. It's our favorite part. Giving. Listen. Listen. This morning as I was getting dressed, God reminded me that weeds have seeds too. Come on. Weeds have seeds too. So if you're planting a grudging seed, that's what's going to grow. Come on, the wheat and the tares. Come on. You, you have to separate yeah. it. And then as Pastor Dollar was going into giving today, he was saying something that also stuck out to me again. Delight yourself in the seeds that you are planting because you know that the harvest is going to be astronomical. Yeah. I said this last time, I'm going to say it again. One seed will produce a mighty harvest. Yeah. So don't be sad or don't be weary because, oh, I had to give out this $10. This was my last $10. God, no, that's your last $10. Right. And he'll sustain you. Come on. He's and as he's sustaining you, yeah. he's multiplying what you're getting ready to walk into. Yes. So as you are giving, be delighted, mm -hmm. be joyful, be thankful, be yeah. grateful because it's being multiplied and it's coming back great than you can even imagine. Yeah, that's Man. so good.
How do we give? So coming up on your screen right now, a QR code, it may have already be up. You can scan that QR code. You can also um, text World Changers all together. Mm -hmm. Leave a space and add your dollar amount, and you're going to text that to the number 74483. You can always call us up yes. at 866 Four seven 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 six eight three. You can also put your check in the mail, money order, however you want to give. Yeah. And that address is going to be twenty five hundred Bardet Road, College Park, Georgia. The zip is three zero three four nine. And you can always give online at worldchanges.org or Creflo Dollar Ministries.org. But get your seed in the ground. Get it in the ground. God who gives the ink. Yeah. So what we got now, Grace? Listen, we just came out. I don't know if you can tell, but we are on a Grace Life High, okay? We are, we are so full right <laughs> Man, now. Man, <laughs> this week has been amazing okay. at the conference. I'm going to say I feel like our experience was different For because sure. we got to experience every other ministry outside of the Dome. Team ministry, shout out to the WCYE. Family, y'all did y'all thing. Yeah, yeah. Grace Life was amazing. How was Grace Life for you? So, a saint, likely, I mean, just like you, I got to pop into different ministries. Yeah. Um, but it was, I can't even begin to explain. Man. Like every year, I know gooder is not a word, y'all, but stick with me. It got gooder and yes. gooder. Every session was so good. Mm. Uh, and I got a chance to, like, speak with some people in the lobby, and they were sharing with me their experiences, things that I missed. And I'm like, oh, my God. Man. But I will tell you something that I realized. If you're under this ministry, Sometimes we take for granted that we hear the grace message mm. every Sunday. But when I tell you I met people who said, this is my first time hearing first a pastor. Time. This is my first time mm. hearing this. This is my first time hearing this. So to know that we sit under a ministry who provides this mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. We're constantly grafting people under the yeah, grace message. Yeah, yeah. A constant pour. Jesus for who he yeah. is. The new covenant, the new uh, laws, the new promises, the better covenant. I don't take that for granted. No. And that was my biggest takeaway. No. And yeah. it's progressive. It's progressive. And it's evolving. Yeah. It's everlasting. Yeah. So you heard, heard it here first. And I'm so excited. Yeah. We have already announced Grace Life 2025. Woo! We want you in the building. We want you to be there. So we are going to be intro introducing Grace Life, the next generation. next generation. If you are, not if, because we know you're interested. We know you need to be there. Make sure you guys text Grace Life to 51555 to register to Today, yeah. a whole 365 days, you there ain't no excuse. No excuse. Don't procrastinate. It's free. It's free. No excuse. Get in the building, be yeah. here, invite your crew. Like yeah. we say friends, but yeah. no, invite your crew. Yeah. Make it a reunion. Make it bring up the we're bringing up the next generation. Yeah, so make sure. sure you are in the building. And I want to be clear, the yeah. teens get the same grace message that, that we adults get in the don't come so on. Have children, they need to be yeah, here. yeah. They, they need to be in the building. Yeah. Those teens were so on fire. My God. Yeah, My well, God. Coming up, we have something, another thing that's so exciting. Yes. We have Back to School. Yay. And I can't believe it's already here. That's next Saturday. It is. Yes. It is. So what we want you to do is text uh, B2 School, all one word, to 51555 so that you can register. Yes. But just so you know, bring all your children. This is the perfect time to invite your coworkers who have kids, people in your community who have kids, all the supplies they're yeah. going to need. We're going to be able to provide uh, different services. Oh, we really want you to be here. Mm -hmm. There are health screenings, haircuts from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. So much fun for the whole family. So come out and join us. Yes. Yeah, what else, Grace? We're going to close out saying that we love you so much if you ain't heard nobody else tell you they love you me and denisa love you Listen. world changes we love you the most important per important person god love loves you. you okay have an amazing day yeah. let god be big in your life what do you want to say to them we're going to end it like that we yes love you so much and we'll see you next sunday bye